When it comes to developing your skills, I've been obsessed by the question, how do you do it in the fastest way possible? Because it takes a while, right? It always does. Whenever you want to learn something new, it takes a while. And sometimes it takes like too much time for me to, because I'm such an impatient soul. But I've been struggling between two usages of impatience because you can use it intelligently and you can use it very poorly. Intelligent impatience means that you try to get there faster by developing new methods, new insights, new strategies that you can use to actually get there faster. And not so intelligent uh, way of using impatience is to try and figure out all kinds of shortcuts that will really just, you know, impair your ability to get to the level you want. An example of that is to, you know, when I figured out that I could do uh, alternate picking uh, much better if I, you know, strained my elbow and really had that cramp going on in my arm and used the whole arm for picking, I would get there faster, or at least I would get results that l that seemed like alternate picking a lot faster. But after I've been doing that for a couple of months, I just realized I'm injuring myself, and it's not really what I want anyway. So I had to unlearn the the shortcut that I've used, and that's a very good example. So, how do we get there faster in an intelligent way? Well, we use one of the uh, principles that is most effective, and that is the fact that you can actually find points of focus. Because let's say you look, you're look, you looking out of the vast field of everything you have to learn when you have to master this instrument, the chords, the rhythm, the, 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 the notes, the scales, the techniques, the hammer-ons and pull-offs, the alternate picking, all of that is impossible, right? And each single one of these different elements that goes into being a very good guitarist takes a months and years to learn. How am I ever going to get there? And these people who actually does get there, they must be very talented. Not true. They use a principle, whether they know it or not, of finding the point that you can focus on that will absolutely disintegrate all the challenges. Because there are always, there are always one point that is behind, or one point, that, just an example. Under uh, when um, the British and the new Americans were fighting uh, the, the War of Liberation back in whatever, um, on the new continent, uh, the Americans, they came up with a new strategy of war. Up until then, they have used this idiotic, jewel-like strategy of placing a lot of young men in rows and uh, in front of each other, and then they would take these uh, guns and just kneel down and walk towards each other and then shoot each other, right? Like in a duel. And whoever ended up with the most surviving men would have won the war. Totally stupid. Just a lot of lost lives, right? And so the Americans thought, okay, can we find a point that we can hit that will just, you know, end this battle really quickly? So they put up hunters by trees and they would take out the generals. They would take out because the soldiers were basically, you know, tweaked in between or, or you know, pinched in between the enemy and then the enemy behind, which was the guy who, who, who was going to shoot them if they deserted. So if we, if the enemy can shoot those guys, then the whole motivation of fighting the war, there's no general anymore, there's no commander in chief anymore, and so nobody's gonna shoot you if you run away, and there's nobody to tell you what to do. So that was just perfect. They ended the battle after battle by just taking out the top people instead of having these young guys fight. Totally, you know, saving lives and, Winning the war, basically, right? And the rest is history. That is a, so, such a good example of using your actual mind to, to get a result much faster. We could do the same thing here. I, I once saw a friend of mine take up guitar and he started playing and that was cool and I showed him some things and then, you know, <laughs> along we went and then a couple of months went by and he was just progressing like crazy. It was like, what are you doing? How can you, how can you play that confidently and that, you know, it was just a, he strummed like a champ, some, you know, in, in record time. And it suddenly dawned on me, he's a drummer, right? So he had half of the equation down when, he, when we started learning guitar. And what an equation and what a half, right? Because rhythm is in everything. It's in rhythm guitar. It's when you solo. Where do you place the notes in the bar? And then the notes, right? It's half-half. But it only takes you like 5 or 10% of the time to learn everything. You know, uh, that rhythm work is 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 not very much compared to every other thing you have to learn. 
So if you can master that, you're just entering the stage of learning to play guitar at a whole new level and you're going to learn so much faster. <laughs> it's just incredible. So that's a really good example of when we look at all the skills that goes into guitar playing, which one skill would improve your ability to do everything else more than any other skill? What single skill could you focus on that would just make you improve when it comes to soloing ability? Because if you if you got your rhythm skills then you can know four four you know four notes of a scale and that's it. You can play a whole solo with that, right? Uh, or you can know a couple of chords and then because you have that rhythm, you can sound like a pro in in so quickly. It's amazing. So that's a very good answer to what skill would give me more benefit than any other skill if I focused on it, you know, passionately with total excitement and really got my skill level up to to uh, and and that's how it is everywhere. What wherever you look in the world, that's the exactly the same principle. So if we can identify within every skill where you are, because you might be a drummer playing guitar, so we don't need to focus on the guitar or, or the rhythm part. But then of the other skills like technique, like scales, like court, whatever it is, what would improve your overall skill level more? And it's like you have several skills, right? And they are on different levels. And every single skill of playing guitar is held back by the slowest child in the family, right? By the, by the, the one that is lowest. So if your court work is very, uh, right, or your soloing work or your scale work, whatever it is, it's going to hold you back to what you can do when you perform or play with other people. So you need to get that up to level. Once it's up to level, we can suddenly hear all your other skills can really come to their full expression. So that's one example. Another example could be if you want to learn a, a specific technique, let's say you want to learn hammer-ons and pull-offs, legato, what specific exercise that if you focused on it would mean more to your development of this specific technique than any other thing you can do? And there always is an exercise like that, always. If you have a chain that is built with razor-like precision on a top-level factory, uh, and it's built by machines, and you put it together with, you know, cast iron and you put those chains together. If you start pulling it, two cars or whatever force you can, that can break the chain, one of these links is going to break first and that's the weakest link. And there always is a weakest link because all the links doesn't break at the same time. There's always one that is just a tiny bit weaker than the other. So you always have something weaker, a weaker skill than the other skills. And that's what you need to work on sometimes. But if you're looking at legato, hand on some pull-offs, what single exercise would encapsulate the whole challenge of legato? That's what you need to find. That's what you need to look into. And you can find, you know, YouTube videos here on my channel that you can look into and really see if you can find those core exercises if you look up legato, hammer-ons, and pull-offs, and so on, right? But it's that is the search because it's not just about legato or it's not just about rhythm or overall skills. This is about a mindset of always looking for it and becoming better at finding those points of focus where you can shoot the general and end the battle in record time, right? That's what you need to be constantly constantly focused on because if that is your general focus, you will develop 10 times faster than anybody around you. Because what does most people do? They just take on everything at once and they start practicing chopping away at it, right? One skill at a time, a little bit here, a little bit there, and it brings them to good at best, right? Brings them to good, but never beyond that because you simply cannot develop extraordinary skills by having an, an ordinary focus or by doing ordinary things. If you want to separate yourself from the, from the huge amount of people who start playing guitar and really get in the, into that group that develops extraordinary skills, you must do something else than most people, right? And a good place to start is to keep looking within each area for those defining exercises, those defining things that you can focus on that means more to your development than anything else. So this is a journey. And 
Uh, one of the reasons why I got the idea from this video is because we have a new program out, a new course that's called Nucleus. And if you're working on alternate picking and you're looking for some exercises that form a power lick, which is just a combination of sequences that you can use to improvise high-speed runs, Nucleus is the thing you're looking for. So look into that if you feel like it. But more importantly, from now on, make sure you cannot forget to constantly look for those points of focus. That's the way you develop extraordinarily and become one of those guys that people point at and say, isn't he talented?